Hello and welcome. Please fasten your seatbelts. We'll delve into statistical arbitrage strategies, short form set up, which leverage statistical methods to identify and exploit pricing inefficiencies between related financial instruments. Focus will be on understanding how to calculate the spread between two correlated assets, apply linear regression to model this relationship and analyze the behavior of the spread over time. I'm going to demonstrate these concepts using Apple versus Microsoft, but you can use whatever two assets you're interested in. First of all, calculating the spread. It doesn't get simpler than that as the spread is simply the price difference between two assets. So the spread between Microsoft and Apple would just be price of Apple minus price of Microsoft. Now, monitoring this spread helps identify deviations from their typical relationship, which might signal trading opportunities. Now, assets in a pair may not move in perfect unison. Their relationship can vary in scale and offset. To model this relationship accurately, we use linear regression, which helps determine two key parameters. First of all, beta, which indicates the relative movement between the assets, and alpha, which represents any consistent price difference between them. So a linear regression would look like this. Price of A, so Apple for instance, would be alpha plus beta times the price of asset B. In this case, that could be Apple, that could be Microsoft or vice versa. So the adjusted spread then would be the price of asset A minus, and then this whole term here. That's a way to calculate the spread using linear regression. And this adjusted spread accounts for both the proportional relationship and any fixed differences, providing a clearer picture of deviations from the norm. Now, let's do all of that with Python. First of all, we need some libraries, so why finance to get stock prices, pandas for data handling. We need the linear regression from sklearn, so you can just import that using sklearn linear model, import linear regression is an additional task. You can also do that from scratch. That also is quite a nice opportunity to consolidate your knowledge. I'm just doing it with a library here. Now we need our tickers. That is Apple and Microsoft. And we're just going to pass those tickers to the YF download function to get prices for them. And I'm just going to start in the beginning of 2020. You can start wherever you like. Just going back some years here. And then I only need the close price. So I'm ending up with the good old data frame showing Apple prices and Microsoft prices. Now, as I just said, we want to model uh, the Apple price with the Microsoft prices. So we are just going to regress to do a linear regression. And in this case, it's only a simple linear regression. The easiest form of a regression, we define an X and a Y. So our X is going to be just our Microsoft values. So we can just index for the Microsoft column here. And then you need to pass that in a proper format. So I'm just going to reshape this format to minus one and one. That is just the format sklearn needs to process the linear regression. So you see, these are just the Microsoft prices as you see them above here in an array with the provided shape, which the linear regression function needs. Next to the Y, there's going to just be the Apple prices. And for this one, it's perfectly fine to use only the values. 
So with that, we have our X and Y. So you see, this is just the Apple prices here. And now we wanna regress. So we define the model we wanna apply, and that is simply the linear regression model, which we've imported above here. So we got a model, and then we wanna fit this model to our independent and our dependent variables, which we have just defined, X and Y. And then we get the feedback model has been fit here. And now we want to take a look at the intercept. So where do I have, I already deleted it, but in this formula I just wrote down. So uh, give me a second, just alpha plus beta times price. So this is just the intercept, the alpha here. And that is in our case 12.43 as our constant, our intercept, our alpha. Then we need the slope or the coefficient and that is simply in model.coef. And this is the slope or the beta of this correlation. So we have this parameter with this parameter and that is just going to be the price of Microsoft so we can model the spread easily. So the spread is just Apple. So the price of Apple minus and then this expression. So just the alpha plus the beta times the Microsoft prices. So obviously define the variables, don't mess it up as I just did. So the model is the coefficient zero. That's just indexing this value, just if you're wondering why I'm doing that. And then I'm assigning it to beta. So we got the spread here defined. And now let's take a look at how this is looking like in a plot. So we wanna plot our index, which are just the dates, and then take a look at the spread value we just calculated. Give it a name. This is just the spread and a nice color, which is just blue. Then we also need a horizontal line, which is the mean spread. And there's just the spread and then you calculate the mean out of that. Give it a nice color. And then maybe a dotted line here. So line style, zack zack. And then also give it a name. So mean spread. Then show the legend and show the plot. So that will give us a very interesting chart here. Uh, this looks a bit off, sorry, making it a bit bigger here. Figure size 12, six. Okay, that looks way better. And this is a very interesting chart here, right? You can see how the adjusted spread over time so that is the uh, blue line here, is fluctuating around its mean. Periods where the spread deviates significantly from the mean, for instance here just as an example, may present trading opportunities based on the expectation that the spread will revert to its average. However, if you take a look at this chart, so you observe that this is actually happening, but just as a note, it is quite important to exercise caution. While the spread may oscillate around a mean, doesn't imply that the spread is stationary. Stationarity means that the spread's statistical properties, such as mean and variance, remain constant over time. A non-stationary spread, even with a mean near zero, as in this case, may exhibit trends or persistent changes, making it unreliable, for instance, 
Mean Reversion Strategies. In follow-ups or subsequent tutorials, we'll delve deeper into testing for stationarity using methods like the augmented Decay Fuller test to ensure the spread's suitability for trading strategies. And we'll also do that large scale. So going over 500, 600 different assets and test for this very valuable property stationarity. So if you're interested in that, leave it a like. I hope you liked this video. You found it as interesting as I find this. So let me know below. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye. Bye.